In this video, we're gonna cover quite a few important things. These include dimensions in Maya, scale, and setting up your heads up display. This is one of those videos that is going to kind of build our foundation for how large actual scenes are in Maya when we model them. So you are watching module one, 17 free videos I've released from the Maya Foundation Homesteader course. There's module two that will teach you how to model, and there's module three that will teach you how to UV so you can texture. To grab module two and three, download the full Maya Foundation Homesteader course. And now let's continue with the tutorial. So the first thing you need to know that everything in Maya, the base dimensions are set to centimeters. Let's check if that's true. Let's go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and Preferences. And we wanna take a look at Settings and Working Units. This will tell you that Maya is currently set to centimeters and that is the unit system that it uses. Now you could change it to whatever you need, but you only change it if you need to. If the project criteria is for you to use specific measurements rather than centimeters. Now for us, we're going to stick with centimeters. We're not going to change it. I just wanted to show you where to find it and to double check that Maya is set to working units to centimeters. So that means everything we create in Maya will be set to centimeters. Let me go ahead and create a cube, just a basic cube. I'm going to use the power model and shelf. And if you remember when we start inputting values for how large to make this cube using the input box, the channel box inputs, these units right here under width, height, and depth, these are set to centimeters because that's our working units in Maya. So if I go ahead and change from value of one to whatever value I need, this will translate to centimeters. So if I wanted height at five, this will be five centimeters. My width, let's say 10, that's 10 centimeters and my depth, let's say two, that's two centimeters. So anything you use inside Maya in any of the input boxes, these are centimeters. Also by default, if I go ahead and zoom in, you take a look at my grid. Actually, let's take a look at the top view. Just by default, each grid unit is also set to one centimeter because we set our width to 10 centimeters. So that means each grid unit, we have 10 grid units 10 squares going across, one, two, three, four, five, and five here. So that's 10 centimeters. So at the moment, right now, the grid, each grid unit is also one centimeter. So this is extremely helpful. Uh, we will set up our grid to match what we are going to be working on. So we will change it in just a minute. But this understanding between the numbers and what they actually mean is very important. So what does this all mean? If we know that everything is in centimeters, we can input numbers and they will be translated to centimeters. What does that mean to us? This means that we should build everything in Maya to correct scale dimensions of our objects. So if we are creating something that is going to be 100 centimeters in height, which is about 3.2 feet. So we should build that to the correct world scale of an actual object. That means we don't create anything that's going to be too small or too big. We have to pay attention to the scale, the actual real world scale this object has in the real world. And we have to translate that into Maya so it matches because these dimensions actually match to many other software or many other game engines. So for example, if we were going to export certain things away from Maya into Unreal Engine, the centimeter system in Maya matches one centimeter to one centimeter in Unreal. Maya, one to one to Unreal. So whatever we create to scale in Maya will translate to the correct scale and dimensions in Unreal. And that goes for many other software that you'll, you might be using. And a lot of times when you actually model an object, you have to look up what the size of that object is. So you, then you can recreate it in Maya to accurate scale, dimension, and proportion. So the first thing to make this accurate is we need some kind of a scale reference, a human scale reference that we can match our objects to, to know if we're modeling things to correct proportion. So let's go ahead and uh, do this now. This is what I usually use, a simple cube to the scale of an average human height, which is going to be about six feet or 180 centimeters in height. This 180 centimeters height also matches very well to Unreal Engine. So let's go ahead and create a cube. This is going to be our scale reference. I'm going to create a cube. 
This is now one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter cube, extremely small. If you're not sure what centimeters translate to inches and you're more uh, familiar with inches and feet, you just have to convert centimeters to feet. So we're gonna set up a height of a box to match about six foot height of a person. I'm gonna select this cube and inside the channel box and in the inputs, I'm gonna set my width to 50. That's gonna be our width of the character or our box, scale box. Our depth is gonna be set to 50 as well. So 50 by 50. And then height is going to be 180, which roughly translates to about six feet. So now you can see that our cube became very large. I'm gonna go ahead and use the move tool, W, and move this cube up. You can see that our grid is now very small. So everything we've created up to this point inside the world origin on that small grid has been very small objects, extremely small. There were just few centimeters. And now this is a six foot high person box. So that means we need to create things to proportion so they match a human character reference. Uh, I'm gonna talk about how to scale the grid up and make that match as well. But the first thing is to start creating a scale reference box pretty much in every single one of your scenes and always have it off to the side so you can know, one, that you're building things to proportion and they match a six foot tall person and everything else that you build it is to scale in the proper dimensions. And this is kind of your way to judge it by creating the scale reference. You should always have this inside your scene prior to you create anything as a way to constantly judge your scale, dimension, and proportion. And I pretty much have this scale box created in every single one of my scenes. If you ever need to check for conversion of centimeters to feet or inches, just go to Google, type in centimeters to feet, and here's going to be our character height, 180. So it's about six feet tall. And depth and width is 50, which is about 1.5 feet. All right, now that we have our scale reference, uh, actually, let's go ahead and also name it. I'm gonna select this box. And in the channel box, I'm gonna type in scale. Now that we have our scale reference, we need to modify our grid to match so it's larger. Plus, we're gonna need to set up a few settings so it matches to what we're gonna be working with. So we need to have those grid units set to specific size as well. So to set up your grid and change it now to match our scene, to match our scale, uh, you go to display, grid, and let's go to options. And the options we're gonna control are right here, these three values. The length and the width, this is the size of the grid. This is how large the grid appears inside your scene. So right now it is only 12 units, which is 12 centimeters. That's why it's so small. That's why it's right there, very small. Let's go ahead and increase this. This is just the size of the overall grid. So you can change this at any time. So I'm gonna just go ahead and type in 1000, but if you need it bigger, you just go in and type in a larger number. Let's go ahead and hit apply. The difference between apply and close and apply is simply hitting apply will keep the window open. Hitting apply and close will apply the settings and close this window. So you don't have to go up and reopen it. So I'm gonna hit apply until I'm done and I just close it off or apply and close. So these two do exactly the same thing. One keeps the window up, the other one removes and closes the window. All right, so now our grid is larger and covers a larger surface area inside the viewport. The next one is subdivision. Subdivision should always be changed to one and it should not be touched. This will make the grid our next value we're gonna we're gonna input grid lines every so many units match to the centimeter value very accurately. So the subdivision, change it to one, hit apply, and don't touch that. That should always be set to one. And the next important value is grid lines every so many units. This value right here at this point is what the scale of each grid unit will be in centimeters. So at the moment it is set to five. So that means each grid unit each square is five centimeters. If you change this, this will match and change each grid unit to be that amount of units or that amount of centimeters. So usually I work in 10 units, 10 centimeters per grid unit. So now each grid unit is 10 centimeters. And if you ever need to change your grid units to match whatever software you're using, or you just need to match it so it has a specific number, this is where you do it. So the two values that you always change whenever you need it are length and width, 
which is the overall grid size, how large it appears inside the viewport, and then grid lines every so many units. And usually just work with 10 until you need to change it to something bigger or smaller. And this will become very handy for us when we start snapping things onto the grid or maybe creating modular pieces. But these are the values that I start with. And these two top two length and width on the grid lines every so many units. These are the ones that you tend to change here and there depending. So now each grid unit is 10 centimeters. To prove this correct, let me go ahead and move this box a little further away. Let me create a cube. You can see that cube is now very small. It's one centimeter. I'm going to change this cube to 10 by 10 by 10. Because we have our grid line set every 10 units, 10 centimeters. If I go to top view and just position it right here, you can see that it now matches the grid unit, the, the grid itself. It's now 10 by 10 by 10. So it is perfect. So just to show you that now our grid is set to 10. Anything we type in here is going to match our grid. And if you've not, if you've done any modular design before architecture, anything that has to be snapped together, this is extremely important. Let's go ahead. Now, these are going to be our settings. Let's go ahead and close. And one more thing I want to make sure is whenever you are creating your scale reference or any other object, you want to go ahead and make sure you position them on top of the grid. Now grid is going to be your ground plane. So it's very important that you start creating things on top of the ground plane and not intersecting through the ground plane. So treat the grid as your ground. So since we haven't covered snapping options just yet, I'm going to go to side view or front view. Uh, let's hit four for wireframe. And I'm just going to drag this down until it kind of matches. So it's almost sitting on top of the grid right there. So right now we're just going to estimates and close enough is close enough. But then later on, I'll show you how to actually start snapping things to the grid. So here we have setup of the scene. Also, another important thing to note is I am orienting my scene inside the viewport like we talked about. So that means I have my Z positive facing towards me. X is pointing to the right and Y is pointing to the top. So our scene is beginning to be correctly oriented right from the start. Next thing also, let's go ahead and enable wireframe unshaded. Alt five. This gives us wireframe on all the objects inside the scene and shaded mode. And I also want to make sure that everything else is set to wireframe in other viewports in orthographics. Again, I don't see my objects appear on if inside the same view. If you select your cube or whatever object you have, if you press shift F, this will frame all views to that object. And now I can go ahead and uh, all of these are already wireframe except for this one on the side view. So I'm just going to hit four with my mouse over that viewport to give myself wireframe in orthographic and then space bar inside the perspective to maximize it. One last thing I want to show you is ability to add heads up display. It's going to be a little HUD displaying the amount of vertices your objects have, amount of edges, amount of faces and triangles. It's going to be very important for us to always keep a, an eye on on the selected components, as well as how many total components, such as vertices, faces, and edges that object has. To enable this, you go to display, heads up display. And over here, you're going to see poly count right here. Just go ahead and enable it. You'll see it show up. And we're going to keep this on pretty much from here on out forever. To explain what each of these three columns mean, well, let me go ahead and create a sphere. And let me just uh, change the size of it, hit R for scale and just scale it up. So that way we can see what's happening inside the scene. Uh, we have more than just one object. So the first column right here, these are the amount of vertices, edges, faces, triangles and UVs you have for everything inside your scene. So no matter where I am inside my view, this will be always displayed as the same. It's for every single object. The second column, is only for the selected object. So you can see I selected my sphere and only the sphere numbers are displayed. And they're slightly smaller than the overall numbers, of course, because we don't have the cube doesn't count in that second column. If I select this one, you can see the numbers changed and they just show only for the selected object. And the third column is for components. So for this, you would need to switch over to a component mode. Let's go to faces. 
and you can see that if I'm selecting a set of faces, the third column will display the selected components of that object. So here you can see that I have 63 faces selected and 126 triangles. If I switch over to vertices, now third column only displays the selected vertices, the amount that I have selected. So first column is all objects, second column is selected objects, and third column are selected components. In the next video within the series, you're going to learn how to open scenes, how to save your scenes so you can reopen them and continue working on them, and how to start new scenes.